All right, so today we're diving into something pretty fascinating, the idea that gut instincts can actually beat those Wall Street algorithms. Yeah. We're looking at this research paper from Quantpedia called The Power of Price Action Reading. Okay. Which put this whole idea to the test. It's an interesting question that I think a lot of people have probably thought about is, can human intuition really compete with you know, these big data-driven systems? Yeah. Particularly in a field like trading. Thank you for tuning in to Quantopian's Quant Radio, your AI-driven podcast exploring everything related to quantitative finance. If you enjoy this episode, don't forget to like and subscribe to stay updated on future releases. For more quant-focused content, join us at community.quantopian.com. There you can explore a wealth of resources, connect with fellow quants, engage in insightful discussions, and enhance your skills through our extensive range of online courses. Quant Radio is intended to help people develop their knowledge and skills in quant finance. This podcast is not intended to provide investment advice. And now, back to the episode. Exactly. And so the researchers set up this experiment where they gave this experienced trader mm -hmm. access to a systematic trading strategy right. and allowed them to actually override the system's signals based on their own gut feelings. To make sure this was a valid experiment, though, they used specialized software to anonymize the stock charts right. and eliminate you know, any extraneous information. Yeah. Just wanted to isolate the impact of the trader's intuition. Yeah, and the interesting thing is, too, is they didn't just say, like, okay, go with your gut and do whatever you want. Mm. They actually gave them the flexibility to choose which signals to act on, which to ignore how to set their stop losses, their profit targets, mm -hmm. you know, so they're essentially managing this strategy based on their experience. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. The research focused on a pretty massive data set, too. Yeah. 9,794 gap events in the stock market. Wow. Between 2016 and 2023. Okay. These are those times when a stock price jumps significantly overnight. Right. Creates these volatile trading opportunities. So the trader is essentially navigating these, like, sudden price movements. Yeah. Trying to figure out, okay, which of these gaps are like genuine opportunities right. and which ones are maybe misleading. Yeah, exactly. And and the results were pretty surprising, actually. Yeah, what happened? The trader managed to turn a previously unprofitable strategy uh -huh. into a profitable one wow. by selectively acting on about 18% of the gap events. Mm -hmm. Their trades actually had a higher average profitability than the system would have achieved on its own. So what was it about the trader's approach that made the difference? Mm -hmm. Did the research actually tell us like what patterns they were recognizing or you know what their decision making process was? It does highlight that they were good at identifying favorable patterns in these gap events. Okay. Particularly adept at recognizing early gaps in momentum cycles. Okay, so like those times when a stock price is trending. Yeah, a sustained upward or downward trend. Got it. Okay. So they were kind of able to see like okay, would you gaps were likely to keep going yeah. versus the ones that were maybe just like blips. Yeah, short-lived. And they were also good at spotting breakouts from multi-week or even multi-month ranges. Okay. So that's where a stock price breaks out of a mm -hmm. period of just kind of staying flat, yeah. signaling a potential shift in market sentiment. It sounds like they were looking for those like momentum shifts, yeah, volatility shifts, mm -hmm. and using their experience to kind of anticipate how these price gaps might play out. And it's interesting because the fundamental reasons behind a stock's price gap weren't actually as important as the trader's ability to manage the position once the trade was initiated. Okay, so it wasn't just about picking the right entry point. Right. It was about knowing when to exit the trade. Right. When to take profits or cut losses. Precisely. Yeah. Risk management was a big part of their success. They were using things like trailing stop losses okay. and multiple profit targets to really kind of adapt to the market's movements. Let's maybe unpack those terms a little bit. A trailing stop loss is basically like a safety net mm -hmm. that moves along with the price of the stock as it rises. Exactly. So it helps you to lock in profits, but it also gives the trade some room to breathe if the price keeps going up. Yeah. So say, for example, the trader buys a stock at $50 and they set their initial stop loss at $45. Okay. A 10% stop. So as the stock price goes up to $60, they adjust their stop loss upward to $54, right. maintaining that 10% buffer. Okay. And if it keeps rising, they keep adjusting it up. Got it. Locking in more and more profits. So it's like a moving safety net. It helps you capture those gains, but also limit 
those potential losses if the price reverses. And then they also used multiple profit targets. Yeah. That's where you set a series of price points at which to take profits rather than just having one target. Right. So instead of saying like, okay, I'm aiming for a 20% gain and then maybe missing out if it stalls before it gets there, right. they might take some profits at 10%, some at 15% and so on. So it's about adapting to those market movements and capturing profits. Strategically along the way. It sounds like a very dynamic and responsive approach as opposed to just like a rigid one size fits all strategy. And the fascinating thing is that the trader seemed to really blend those techniques with their intuition and their ability to just read those market signals. Yeah, they weren't just following rules. They were making informed decisions based on data and experience. So it really highlights the power of that human judgment. Yeah. That ability to kind of adapt and make those nuanced decisions that algorithms might struggle with. There's a certain art to trading. Yeah. A feel for the market that comes with experience and observation. To really understand the impact of this trader's intuition, let's look at some specific examples from the research paper. One that really jumps out is figure five, which kind of visually shows the profitability yeah. of different trading strategies applied to these gap events. It compares the performance of the systematic strategy just on its own okay. versus when the trader was allowed to use their judgment okay. to override signals. And the difference is pretty striking. Yeah. The profitability line for the trader influence strategy shows a significant upward trend, reaching a peak of 0.25R after 12 days. Now, you mentioned R earlier. Yeah. I think it's worth clarifying that for listeners who might not be familiar with like trading lingo... Sure. R stands for risk unit. Okay. It's a way to standardize how we measure profitability in trading. Got it. Taking into account how much risk is involved in each trade. So it helps us compare apples to apples when we're looking at different trading approaches. So a higher R value generally means better profitability. Yeah. Relative to the risk taken. Got it. Okay. So figure five basically shows that the trader's decisions were adding value. Yeah boosting the profitability of that strategy. Yeah, compared to just doing it mechanically. Compared to just letting the algorithm run on its own. Exactly. Okay, now figure eight takes this a step further, right? Yeah, figure eight is even more interesting. Okay. Because it uses the trader's actual real world trading data. Okay, so this is like real. This is the real deal. Yeah. It factors in their entries and exits. Yeah. Their risk management techniques. It gives us a more realistic picture. Of their trading style. So it's not just like a theoretical simulation. Right. This is based on what they actually did in the market. Exactly. And the results are pretty impressive. Okay, what do we see? The profitability on the gap day itself jumps to 0.55R. Wow. Okay. And it peaks at 0.8R just four days later. Okay. So this means that the trader is not only good at recognizing those favorable gap setups, right. but also at managing those trades as things play out. So it's like they have this knack for like riding those waves of volatility yeah. and capturing the profit, but also minimizing those potential losses. That's a great way to put it. Yeah, they have a feel for the market. Yeah. They know when to hold on and when to take those profits. Now, we've been talking about profitability in terms of R. Yeah. Can you put that in like real world money terms? Sure. That's where figure 10 comes in. Okay. The researchers took that real world trading data from the trader. Okay. And they simulated a portfolio starting with $100,000. They used the trader's risk management rules mm -hmm. and tracked how that portfolio would have grown over eight years. So we're seeing what would happen if someone actually invested based on this trader's approach. Exactly. And the results are pretty amazing. Okay. Over those eight years, the simulated portfolio went from $100,000 to over $4 million. Wow. That's almost a 4,000% return. That's incredible. Yeah, it really shows how powerful human intuition can be yeah. when you combine it with skill and disciplines. It's a testament to the idea that you know, there's still room for human expertise in this world that's increasingly dominated by algorithms and quantitative analysis. Absolutely. Okay, so we've explored the experiment. Yeah. We've dug into the trader's techniques. Mm -hmm. What's the one key takeaway you want our listeners to remember from all of this? If I had to boil it down to one thing, I'd say don't underestimate the power of human intuition. Okay. Especially when you combine it with knowledge experience. Yeah. And a disciplined approach. Yeah. This research shows that human judgment is still really valuable, even in a world dominated by algorithms and big data. Yeah, it's really interesting to think that in a field that's often seen as, you know, all about numbers and data, mm -hmm. 
that there's still this space for human intuition and experience. Yeah. It's not about getting rid of data altogether. It's about finding that balance. Exactly. This research isn't saying we should abandon algorithms or anything. Right. It's suggesting that maybe we could look at how to incorporate some human insights into those systems, finding a way to bring human judgment and quantitative analysis together. Exactly. Now, this study was all about a discretionary trader. Right. Someone who's making decisions based on their own analysis and judgment. Yeah. Do you think these findings could be applied to more systematic strategies mm -hmm. or even automated trading strategies? That's a great question. And while the study doesn't directly address that, it does make you wonder if we could build in elements of human intuition okay. into those automated systems. Yeah. Imagine algorithms that find potential opportunities, but then a human trader actually makes the final decision. So it's not about fully automating everything. Exactly. It's finding that middle ground. Yeah, that sweet spot between human oversight and automated execution. And it sounds like this research suggests that a hybrid approach like that could be really effective. Especially in dealing with the complexities of the financial markets. This research really encourages us to think about the role of human intuition. Mm -hmm. Not just in finance, but in any field where data and algorithms are becoming more and more common. So to all of our listeners out there, as you're navigating those complex situations in your own fields yeah. and you're making those decisions, whether they're big or small, remember that your gut, feeling your experience, your intuition, mm -hmm. those things matter. They're powerful tools yeah. when you use them alongside a solid understanding of your field mm -hmm. and a disciplined approach to making those decisions. Absolutely. Who knows? Maybe that combination will lead you to uncover some incredible outcomes of your own. I hope so. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive. We'll catch you next time. 